Yo, what's going on everybody? It is straight out of Austin here, and today I'm back for episode number 31 of my Philadelphia Phillies franchise here on MLB 15 The Show. So take a look at the player stats for the 2017 season. We've got uh, position players and pitchers both coming up. I figured I would uh, show you guys what the final stats looked like after a pretty disappointing end to the season. We finish just one game shy of the playoffs, but as you can see, we failed to meet our contract goal and we haven't actually uh, lived up to expectations. It's we have a G GM rating of F right now. And I didn't think that would come into play. But when we start up the offseason here, our contract has come to an end. And we've been fired by the Philadelphia Phillies. Oh my goodness. I did not imagine this. Everything that we've built for the last couple of years in Philadelphia is gone. So... I considered two different teams here, the Astros and the Braves, for my new contract. And obviously the Astros were very tempting. We could build around young star Carlos Correa, already one of the best players in baseball. Also have the likes of George Springer, Jose Altuve, Dallas Keuchel. Plenty to build around there. They were 80 and 82 last season, so definitely room for improvement. But ultimately I had to go with the Atlanta Braves. So now I have a chance to shove it right up my former teams behind and try to uh, knock them off here in the NL East. So I'm going to be taking over the Atlanta Braves, a team with a ton of young pitching, not a core of position players really intact. They have Freddie Freeman, Jose Peraza, and that is about it, but tons of young arms. And ultimately, I didn't want to leave the NL East. I was looking for that Mets job. I thought they would be the perfect team, but the Braves, who finished in last place last year in the NL East, were the team to go with here. So I'm going to be hiring Bruce Bochy as my manager, as the uh, manager for the Braves. Well, Freddie Gonzalez, I assume, was fired along with their GM, John Hart. So here you can see a bunch of guys accepting different contracts. This was me basically just re-signing everybody. No one got more than a one-year contract, though. So we're going to have sort of a sense of accountability this first year here in Atlanta. Anyone who doesn't perform, we're going to have a short leash with... I do not want to go through a rebuild with this team. I want to win next year, and I ultimately just want to beat the Philadelphia Phillies. I cannot believe they let me go after everything that I built for that franchise. And, I mean, literally, they only gave me three years to make the playoffs. That was an absurd task. So, we're making a couple salary dump trades here. We give up uh, Nick Markakis, and we get Darren O'Day, and then we also trade Alex Rios for Bruce Rondon, so we add to the bullpen. And then that gives us enough money to try and go after free agent Brandon Bell, who, of course, Bruce Bochy managed out in San Francisco. I'm also looking at Lorenzo Cain to bring in and play center field next year. He's only an 80 overall, so it's only going to take around $6 million to bring him in. I also signed a bunch of minor league free agents. And then Lorenzo Cain takes our deal $18 million over three years. But then, as you can see, we can no longer afford the uh, offer to Brandon Belt. So we're making some more moves here with Lorenzo Cain. We don't need Cameron Mabin anymore. We also trade uh, Nick Castellanos and pick up Jung Ho Gong in the deal. And then I found a bunch of more salary dump trades. Eric Young Jr., Stephen Drew, and Johnny Gomes all were just uh, making around $2.5 million at the bottom of our roster. You can see Gomes making 3.2 here. So I quickly dumped them off the team. And now we have enough money to go after Todd Frazier. Third base is one of the spots that I need to fill in for next year. And I thought, who better than Todd Frazier, the Todd father? So I give him a four-year, $76 million offer. And then I make a huge trade with the Chicago Cubs, Mike Miner, Alex Wood, and Dustin Peterson for Jorge Soler. And then we keep simulating through here. And Todd Frazier accepts our offer. Four years, $76 million. He is now an Atlanta Brave. And then we still need a right fielder. So we're going to trade Williams, Perez, and Tyrell Jenkins for Cole Calhoun, and we're also going to flip Gary Nguyen, Alberto Mortero, and Ryan Lavarway for John Jaso, and that pretty much fills out the starting nine. So we came into the offseason with like seven or eight major league quality pitchers. That's why I knew I wanted to trade Mike Miner because it was his last year of team control, and Alex Wood because he was like the sixth or seventh starter making three point something million, and the Atlanta Braves, you know, we do kind of run on a tight budget, don't really have the most resources out there, so you do sort of have to... Um, you know, look for good bargains, good deals for good players in, in certain positions. But take a look at what our lineup looks like. So, it's a little bit different against lefties than against righties. We just swap our number one and our number eight hitters because Bedencourt plays against lefties, whereas Jason only plays against righties. But against righties, I like to put Jason in his high OBP ways uh, into the leadoff spot and then follow it up with Kane, Freeman, Frazier, Soler, Calhoun, Gong, and Peraza, and then the pitcher spot. And then, like I said, against lefties, we just swap Peraza and Betancourt, who comes in for JSO. So, that is what the team looks like. Uh, honestly, I know I kind of rushed through this. It was a really shocking development. I looked every way I could, and I just, there was no way I could stay on the Phillies. They made up their mind. They were firing me. 
which I was pissed at because literally, I mean, everything I built there with Benito Rodriguez, you know, as Carpenter, and like all the young studs I had on that team, and all the pitching, you know, bringing in Steven Strasburg, and then they fire me three years into my deal after I just won 86 games with that team. I mean, come on, that is absolute BS. And now I know in the future, turn off GM contracts and start up a franchise because that is just stupid. So now there's only one thing left to do, and that is to get revenge on my old team. Opening day is coming up in the next episode, and that's right, it's going to be Atlanta versus Philadelphia. So I hope you guys are excited for that. That'll be coming out tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you did enjoy, and I'm out. Peace.